Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always. And as of today, July 21st, 2021, the cold start procedure for your F-18C Hornet has changed. This is because of an open beta update that added the alignment procedure for your joint helmet-mounted queuing system helmet-mounted display. Now it's important that we get this alignment as correct as possible, otherwise it's going to look very strange as you're looking around at the airspace around your jet, as well as it'll make it very difficult to line up those high off-bore sight shots with your AIM-9 x-rays, or to queue up ground targets with your HMD in air-to-ground mode. As a result, we're going to do a normal cold start procedure today, emphasizing the HMD alignment process at the end of the cold start procedure. Now the aircraft we're in today is an F-18 Hornet painted as an aggressor assigned to VMFAT-101 at MCAS Miramar, the Marine Corps' Hornet Training Squadron. It's important for a training squadron to have an aggressor aircraft assigned to their squadron to allow new Hornet pilots to practice their air-to-air -air combat skills without having to link up with an aggressor unit or deal with any contractors. So let's go ahead and get right into the cold start procedure. In my first attempt to make this video, I definitely made a few errors, so it's time to correct those. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the battery switch on the right hand console to the on position with a right click. Please keep in mind that in Eagle Dynamics modules, a right click will always bring a switch forward and a left click will always bring it aft. This is also true on your instrument panel with a right click bringing a switch up and a left click bringing the switch down. So first thing we'll do is we'll do a fire test. We'll give a right click to test Engine channel A. Left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. Test A seems to be working as advertised. And so to get Betty to rewind her tape a little bit faster, we'll turn the battery off for a count of about one, two, three and it should be rewound, so let's go ahead and turn the battery back on and do a test on circuit Engine B. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. All right, everything seems to be working as advertised. Please do keep in mind that if you do a fire test, it will shut off the bleed air from both your left and right engines, just as it would as if there was a real fire. This is done to make sure that your cockpit doesn't fill with smoke from a fire inside the engine base. So we already have our battery on. We'll come to the left console, just outboard and after the throttle, and turn the APU on. We now have a green ready light, letting us know that the APU is now ready to fire up the two engines. We'll go ahead and give a right click to crank the right hand engine. Once we see the RPM and temperature start to rise in the right hand engine, we can go ahead and hit right shift and home to bring the right throttle to the idle detent and continue the startup procedure for that right hand engine. and the engine should stabilize right at about 65 RPM. And once the spring-loaded engine crank switch is back in the center position, you know you're ready to crank the left-hand engine. So let's go ahead and give it a left click. You can see the RPM start to rise in the left-hand engine. And we'll hit right alt and home to bring the left throttle to the idle detent.
and at this point, we'll go ahead and close the canopy to make it a little bit quieter for the rest of our cold start procedure. We'll make sure to turn our OBOGs on, our onboard oxygen generation system, and we'll go ahead and give a right click to our canopy switch and bring the canopy down and hold it until it is fully locked. That should be good right there for us. And our APU can either be turned off manually once both engines are started, or it will turn off automatically once both angel engines are turned on and stabilized. Next, we'll turn on all of the displays in our cockpit, our two DDIs, as well as our MPCD down between our knees, and of course, our HUD. Once the MPCD is turned on, we'll go ahead and start our INS alignment. We'll bring the radar switch to the operate position and our INS to the ground position. Because of the squat switch, the radar will not actually turn on with weight on wheels, so we don't have to worry about overheating the radar. Coming back to the HSI, which automatically populates on the MPCD, we can press the STD HDG OSB button for a stored heading alignment for a faster alignment. I always recommend waiting for the MPCD to be turned on before you start the INS alignment for new F-A-18 Hornet pilots to make sure that you don't miss the STD HDG or stored heading alignment button. As that is starting to go, we can go ahead and move around the cockpit and go over other systems that need to be turned on. We'll go ahead and hit our IFF and turn our IFF on. Please note that when you press a push tile like IFF or data link, hold the on off button for about a second to make sure that things turn on. At this point, we can go ahead and uncage our standby ADI I like to also turn on my RWR on the ground, and for new pilots, I recommend also turning on your dispensers. For the sake of realism today, we'll go ahead and leave our dispensers off, so that way we don't accidentally FOD a taxiway or runway with an unintentional chaff or flare dump. Next, we'll go ahead and turn on our position lights. We can see those are on, looking at our wingtip. Keep in mind that the strobe lights on our vertical stabilizers are always on by default in the FA-18 Hornet. Next, we'll come down to the left-hand console. We'll bring our book hook bypass to field. We'll turn on our landing light, flaps to half, and make sure that our anti-skid is turned on since we're at an airfield. If you're on an aircraft carrier, you want to make sure that your anti-skid is turned off. So that way when you're taxiing on the aircraft carrier, the anti-skid doesn't think you're slipping and release braking pressure, potentially leading to a mishap of you taxiing over the side of the carrier. If you plan on landing on an aircraft carrier, make sure your hook bypass is set to carrier. Formation lights only need to be turned on during the nighttime. They have no purpose during the daytime. Next, We'll go over to the FCS page on our support menu, and we'll come down to the FCS reset button on the FCS panel just aft of the throttle quadrant. We'll hit the reset button, and while we're here, we'll press the takeoff trim button. Looking at our FCS page, we can see the stabs are set to 12 degrees nose up. That is indicating the trim for the stabilators. If you have an empty FA-18, like you're a Blue Angel about to fly an airshow performance, a stab of nose up of 12 is per perfectly adequate. However, today we are too wet with a few bombs on the jet, so I recommend that we go to about 16 degrees nose up stab trim. If you have three wet with a whole bunch of bombs on your jet, I recommend going all the way up to 18 degrees nose up trim on the stabs. Next, we can see on our left EDI, we have a few cautions and advisories letting us know that our left bleed air and our right bleed air are still off from our fire test that we did at the beginning of our cold start procedure. We'll come over here 
and we will cycle our bleed air switch to turn it to the norm position and get the bleed air turned on so that way we can get cooled off by the ECS on this hot and humid Mariana Islands day. This will also allow the ECS to pressurize our cockpit. Keep in mind that if you do a fire test, you'll have to cycle the bleed air to get it to turn back on. At this point, we'll go to our HUD repeater on our left DDI, and we'll go back to the bit page on our right. At this point, we can go through the bit for our HMD. We'll go ahead and turn on our HMD, and we can see it's more or less in the right spot, but things are definitely not aligned correctly for these two F-16s that are supposed to be up in the air that just flew over the top of us. So let's definitely do a HMD alignment. We can see there's definitely some errors. We'll do, go to displays, select HMD, and let the HMD cycle through its various test displays. Once it's cycled, we can go ahead and hit the stop. We'll go back to our menu, back to the support page, go to the HMD, and commence the actual alignment itself. We'll hit the align button, make sure it's boxed, and we should say a cross on our HMD and a cross on our HUD. We wanna move our head to align our HMD and our HUD as close as possible. Then press and hold the cage uncage button for two and a half seconds. All right. Our alignment was okay, but we'll go ahead and do a bit of a fine alignment as well. We'll go ahead and zoom in, and we can see this top cross is more or less already aligned with the big cross on our HUD. We can move it around via our throttle designator controller. So we'll try to get these guys as close as possible. Then we will press TDC to press, and now we're going to adjust our roll on our HMD with the bottom cross. As we move our TDC left and right, we can see the roll setting for our HMD is changing. We want to have the vertical line match the vertical line of the large cross on our HUD. That's good there. TDC depress, and we now have our HMD aligned. We'll go ahead and unbox a line on our HMD display, we'll go back to menu and back to our FCS. At this point, our INS alignment has been done for quite a while and it's perfectly fine to leave it in the OK setting without switching it to nav or IFA until you're ready. We'll go ahead and do a couple right hand clicks on our INS knob to bring it to the IFA position. Keep in mind that we want to absolutely make sure that we do right clicks on our INS knob to make sure we bring it to either NAV or IFA right away. If we accidentally do a left click, it'll bring it to the CV or the off position and we'll have to redo the INS alignment from square one. We always want to make sure that if we're flying in the modern era, in a contemporary era here, we always want to go to the IFA position because that will keep our INS aligned via GPS signals. All right. Our helmet mounted display is aligned and ready to go. Everything's looking a little bit better now. And at this point, we're just going to do a sweep over the cockpit and ensure that we have everything 100% ready to go. Definitely got our oxygen on. We're definitely breathing through our mask. We're good there. We got our lights on coming through here. I guess we can turn off our parking brake. Flaps to half, launch bar is up, taxi lights on, hook bypass set to field, anti-skid is on as well. And we'll go ahead and set a bingo setting. I like to set a bingo setting of around uh, 10,400 or so. So that way I can get a bingo notice from Betty. She'll say bingo, bingo, once we have our external tanks exhausted. I then like to switch my bingo setting to about 4,000 pounds, so we know when it's time to he start heading back home towards Anderson Air Force Base on our training sortie. We can see, we can verify that we've got three down and locked with flaps set to half. 
coming through. We've got our HUD repeater ready to go. We have our IFF turned on, our data link turned on. We have our raw equipment turned on. We'll set ECM to standby. And of course, we'll come down and set our FLIR to standby as well. I recommend setting your FLIR to standby during your cold start procedure. So that way you always have power to your FLIR pod and it will turn on and be ready to go for you a lot faster than going from the off position to the on position once you're in the air. So we'll go ahead and we will arm our ejection seat. And the last thing we'll do here is just uncage our radar altimeter. Everything should be good to go. We've got our wings unfolded and locked. Our hook is up, flaps are at half, and we're ready to go. So we'll just smoothly advance the throttles. Taxiing in the FA-18 is quite easy because the nose wheel is right underneath our cockpit and it makes it very smooth and easy to stay on the center line. This is especially important when you're taxiing on an aircraft carrier and it really shows off your professionalism as a pilot if you handle the aircraft very well on the ground. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and give it a like and potentially a subscribe to my channel. I know that I got things a little bit wrong on the first attempt at this video, but I'm human too, and I make mistakes. And I hope this video helps you guys out with the updated and new cold start procedure as of July 21st, 2021. As always, guys, fly safe out there and stay healthy. We'll see you in the next one.